Hey, it's me, Vey Vey Vey, and today I'm going to be showing you about optimization because the game has been not running very well. So, the first thing I did was I just kept working on the level as I've been doing, and I started realizing that we're having really bad frame rates. I think I talked about this in the previous episode, kind of alluded to what we're going to do um, right now, or what I did last week, I guess. But I found, man, it's really laggy. We were getting like 30 FPS, 30 to 40, I think. I don't know if I have a video of it, but maybe I do, I don't know. Um, and so I was like, this is utterly unplayable. So I looked into how to fix it, and I found out it was the lighting. So two, two tricks I found are um, to make lights not catch shadows. So that was like the big issue. That fixed a lot of stuff, but you shot back up to like 100 frames per second. And then um, I also made it so the lights um, don't render all the time. I forget what it's called. Draw distance, I think. I made it like 7,000. Some of them you can see, some lights you can see from further away, so I gave them higher um, draw distances. And then there's a few others um, that I gave short ones because you can't really see them from that far. So I was only gonna save a few little, you know, a bit of processing power on like those couple of lights. So yeah, that was going good, and it was it was fine. It was working great. We had great FPS, and then I so I just kept going. So there's this one little section of the map. Um, I'm gonna talk about this real quick before I go on to the rest of the video, um, where you kind of have a bit of a choice. You know, you can there's two routes sort of. I don't know the speed of the two. One is like the easy route sort of. Um, it's there's like a little bit of parkour. You can't see it, but I'm using the quotation mark things with my fingers. Um, and the other one has a bunch of combat. So. You know, there's different pros and cons, I guess, to each side. Um, and then one, one you get a power up. I think the um, the quote easy side gives you more on um, like ammo and stuff. I don't know. I have to look back in, but it definitely has less enemies. Actually, that might not be true because there's this huge batch of a bunch of um, easy just knife bad guys, um, but they're really easy to kill. So there's that. And then it goes into a bit of like an office space. I'm not entirely sure where this part of the level's meant to be. Oh, I am. Well, the first part I don't know. But then the rest of it is like a office building, so there's like a, um, like a, what do you call it, like a lounge or something like that? A break room, I think? Something like that. But it's actually time to appear, um, they'll appear in a few different levels in the future, because that's the only thing I could really think of to add for like an office type of area. So, yeah. And then there is uh, a big hallway with a bunch of rooms that are all locked. You don't know what's behind them, but you can use your imagination. Um, so anyways, I came up with a new enemy type. I didn't come up with it, I, had a lot, I have all the enemy ideas planned, and I have a plan for a long time. But I decided to make it, and it doesn't have a name, but it's a guy, he has a shield and some sort of sword thing. The shield model is temporary, by the way, but he got a bunch of health, because I was playing through it, and I found that it's getting too easy at this point. You can one-shot most of the enemies, and the other ones that you don't one-shot are really easy to kill. And you can just like peek around corners and stuff, um, so I need to find out a way to make that all happen. Also, a side quest, or something, I don't know. Um, I need to add back hearing and the damage sense because the AI is so dumb now. I don't know how I changed it or how I broke it or how to turn it back, but now they can't hear and they can't feel damage. So previously, you know, if you shot, they'd like know where you were within like a short radius, but that way you can't just like be behind them and keep shooting them. And I can't remember if I implemented it or not. Um, I can't remember if I did the touch sense or the damage sense, but essentially, um, like if you were to like jump on their heads or whatever, you know, they wouldn't just keep walking around in circles, you know, they'd actually like, be like, oh, there you are, and start shooting you. Um, and then the damage sense is if you shoot them, they'll be like, hey, there you are, you know, that kind of stuff. Anyways, um, I also think I need to add anything that allows them to shoot up and down. I've probably talked about this before, but it's a lot of work, and so I probably won't do that. Um, where was I? That was a bit of a tangent, wasn't it? Um, so yeah, new enemy type. And um, it's as dumb as the other ones as well. But it has slightly more complicated, um, what do you call it? AI. So, um, yeah, I just, all I did was beef up the, the default enemy a little bit. I gave it like a big chest plate thing, as well as um, some squares on its arms to be like, you know, really strong. And I gave it big shoulder pads. And I was just gonna make the helmet a bit bigger as well, a bit more intimidating, you know? And then also the enemy itself is huge. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna give him like a laser shield. And um, yeah, I don't know how I'm gonna make the shield block attacks yet. So for now it's just cosmetic. But he um, has something that hasn't been done before, and that is that when it gets on low health, it will, um, well, it's supposed to change the AI. It really doesn't, and it also accidentally affects every single one of those guys on the level, which um, is bad, but also I'm not going to bother trying to fix it because it took me a long time to figure out how to make it work anyways, and um, so it's going to be like this, and it should be fine because I'll tell you why in a second. So, now I had made this enemy, 
And then I also figured out how to make them play animations. Um, it's just there's literally just a thing in Behavior Tree to make them play animations. Who knew? Um, so the knife guys will like do like a stab attack when they attack you. Um, so that's pretty cool, pretty snazzy. Um, I still have yet to find a way to make them stop moving or detach the AI from them, so they still move around. But um, then you know, I'm still getting a nice like 100, 120 FPS in the editor. But when I load it in, it dropped down to like 50 FPS, which isn't horrible, I guess, but it still is not great. So I was like, well. This is bad. And then I found out um, through uh, dough eating all the enemies and then playing the level that it is all the enemies in the level and presumably all of their um, code running at once that makes the game you're like, ah, you know, and then you lose FPS. So I did, I had a few uh, solutions to this. One is to make enemies spawn in when you get to a certain area. And I could do this like how um, like a few games do it um, where like they actually like, you know, just teleport in, you know, I could do that. Um, a few games do that, or I could just make them make it so like when you go across a trigger, they like silently spawn in the next room over, so you won't notice it. And then um, presumably they despawn, so you can just like run through all the rooms or walk room or whatever. Um, so then you don't like go through spawn all the enemies, and then it's like laggy again. Um, I guess I could do that in theory if I wanted to, but I don't want to, so I'm not going to do that. Um, but I didn't like either of those options because I couldn't figure out how to do it. Um, I well, my theory was if I made a uh, an actor that when it was triggered by an event would um, uh, spawn the enemy AI, but for whatever reason, it didn't spawn it with AI. And then additionally, I don't know how I would add the patrol points because to make it go in like a specific pattern. Um, and so then they'd always be wandering around aimlessly and then that would just be kind of bad. So I just gave up on that and decided to go for a different option, which I didn't tell you about earlier, which is to just make the levels smaller. And this actually will benefit some things which might just be myself trying to cope with this, but it'll allow me to do almost like an episode structure, like how the original Doom game does, where it's like, you know, you have like a few levels and then, oh, there won't be exactly like that. But it's, if you remember, I think last episode I talked about how each level will be split up into like three or four different parts. I'm still gonna do that, but instead each part's gonna be a new level. Um, and so it'll just be quick, short little levels you can jump through. Um, and then, you know, you go the next one, uh, which will make it so a few things I want to do um, won't be able to be done. For example, there was one thing where I was gonna have a button way at the end of the level, you press that and you can go all the way back and then open the room. Um, but I just made it so you don't have to go as far. Um, it's in a secret room actually. But things like that I won't be able to do or um, like allowing the player to go back through, you know? So that is a thing. Um, so what I did is I just chopped off everything after um, a door a door um and then you go through you press a button and you go back through that door and that would lead to the rest of the level what i was talking about back at the beginning with where it slits up the two different branches but now that part is actually level two so now the levels are just probably like three or four minutes um probably you can probably come through it in like one or two minutes if you just zip through it um but if you want to get all the secrets and stuff it'll probably take you three or four minutes maybe five minutes if you're not familiar with the level you know first time trying to get everything but yeah and then so now i am faced with the prospect of changing levels and there's an issue which I'm just choosing to ignore right now, and that's that your ammo and armor and health all reset to zero armor, full health, and full ammo. Um, and I don't know how to fix that. I think I use a thingy that I tried to use before, but it didn't work. I know that's very specific, but um, I don't know. Like, it didn't work before, so I'll have to like look up a tutorial or something to figure out how to do that. Which I don't want to do, but I might have to do it. So, yeah. But there's a um, in-between level thing, which is really big bones right now, but it's going to tell you it might tell you how many like percentage of enemies you killed and stuff, but I don't know if I want to do that, so I might not do that. So that's yeah. Um, and another thing I did, I just kept doing things, I guess, um, except for the things I actually needed to do. Um, I made a collision thing for secrets, so I just put this box anywhere that there's a secret. So when you collect it, it activates a thingy and it adds one to your found secrets um, thing. So. Um, and then I'll use that in the intermission screen level um, to show how many secrets you found. Um, so yeah, I won't spoil any of the secrets um, because I guess I actually end up releasing this game and you want to find them on your own. But that is something I did and it'll be easy to add like a sound and stuff for when you find the secrets. So um, next episode, I'm going to be doing kind of the same thing I did this episode. Um, however, I'm going to also be decorating the levels, so that'll be a fun, new, and exciting, um, adventure to go on, so, yeah.
I'll see you in a couple of weeks.